Hi, Neil Brennan here. You're watching the Blocks Podcast. My guest today is a guy I know a little bit. Uh, you may recognize him from the internet. He lives on the internet. And uh, he got to start on the internet by waiting in line for iPhones. I've been here since 6 o'clock this morning. So that's, there's a nice flashback of him doing that. How old were you during that? Oh, man. I... 16 probably 17 yeah. you seem like yourself though yeah uh, yeah yeah it's weird to watch because it's like relatively fully developed personality yeah, you at can't that point. Dis- you can't discard that guy <laughs> right like, no that's who you are that's fully who i am yeah you just make catchy ass songs and you do uh from what i've seen i did i, I saw a little bit of you in montreal from very far away oh yeah uh, his name's mark rebelay everybody he's here today here and i am let's learn more about the man abracadabra <laughs> i've appeared how old are you 35 great yeah so you you earned it aging but you earned it is what i'm saying it's yeah. like you weren't you didn't make it at 19 and no god no far from it you're like slow burnham yes slow burnham. i just made that up it's bo burnham but fantastic slow. yeah um oh. yeah we could only hope to have his trajectory oh, jesus christ for god's sake god. for all of us yeah god. <laughs> you're listening. endlessly and just burning shooting stars um, ridiculous he's great yeah. so so what did you i i don't really know much about how you came to be well yeah like you said it was very much a slow burnham it was like I started trying to be an actor. It was like I was acting for my whole childhood. I grew up in New Jersey partly and then Texas, Dallas. And I was doing like regional theater, high school for acting, college for acting, dropped out of college, scared, fell out of love with the theater thing, I think. And I'd also- Scared in that, in what way? Well, I think scared of wasting money you know what I mean? It was like this expensive private school in Dallas. Oh, SMU. That, okay. So this is in instead of college. Yeah, or, yeah, got it. yeah. It was you know I I just I was in there like something smoking weed. I mean it was a university. It was just private and expensive, and got so it. I just I yeah dropped out before I could do any more damage to like. How long do you stay? A year. Okay. A year. I like transferred re- just reflexively into journalism for like two weeks. Which would have been fun, I think. Still kind of mm-hmm. would enjoy, you know. This is dying. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually, yeah. not yeah. a good industry. You're better yeah. off making songs on the internet. Right. Bitch, go ahead and bust the tits out now. Go ahead and bust the tits out, baby. Go ahead and bust the tits out, baby. Yeah, I mean, it worked out. <laughs> it worked so, out. All right. So then you're 22, and then what do you think? What are you gonna do? Dropped out. Basically, well, I'd been so at the same time as the acting shit, I'd been playing piano since I was like. Four, four maybe and that's just a side thing i just play piano i was raised like trained classically and then taught myself like jazz blues ish roughly and so yeah so then i was like all right i'll buy myself a little home studio and uh, see if i can learn how to make shit and the and goal, this is what you like what are the what what was available it was i would say it was pretty fully like digital at that point we're talking 2009 10 you know what i mean so it's like timbaland yeah and these people making like digital hits so it's like logic and a little midi keyboard and drum pads and you could you could really buy like a full fully functioning home studio setup for like under a grand you know even less so yeah i got the keyboard what sort of songs did you think you were gonna make I had no idea. I think I wanted to do hip hop. Really, I th- my, the goal was like to be a producer, like a traditional producer, like ma- making beat tapes for and people, sending them here. You like anything? Yeah, give me twenty grand. Exactly. Like sending okay. them to producers, sending yeah. them to contests, submitting whatever. Yeah. I tried to do that for like a decade, basically. You know, just very unsuccessfully. And make- are you like, what are you doing for money? I waiting tables. I got. Good. You know, customer you, support. I was hoping you would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good boy. Good, good, good. Yeah. Great, good, good, great. Yeah. I mean, all Real sorts of shit, yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, a ton. Yeah. I mean, I yeah, executive assistant. I did like mortgage loan servicing. Um, I got my my real estate license for like half a year. Miserable. 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 Because real estate that, license. You know what the thing about it is, is that 
when you work, it's like, I, you don't want to do any of these jobs, but like the difference between waiting tables and a real estate license is like waiting tables. You don't have to give a shit about it, but the, you get your real estate license. Suddenly, like you have to concentrate and work on this thing that you despise. So yeah. it's like, I just very quickly realized like, why would I do that? And then I just went back to waiting tables. So yeah. And did you get better at beats? Did the beats get better? I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah, over a decade, I just kept like doing it and doing it. And are you performing at all? Not at all. So you're not making a cent. What was your bottom? (laughs) Well, oh man, a very clear bottom actually, which was, I lost this job. I, it was, it was another customer support job in Dallas working, which I assume they all are. They're all that. (laughs) It's just a bunch of like nameless corporate business parks. Office park. Yeah. Yeah. Just a little tan, just an inoffensive waterfall. Yep. Some stone seats. Guy comes around with sandwiches. Have it. Yeah. Can I get you anything? Yep. You know, hell, hell, hell on earth. Um, yeah. Walked in one day and they were like, Hey, come on over. Let's have a meeting. We come have a meet. We're letting you go right now. Security's outside. That Pack you were going to have a meeting, or was it like? Yeah, this I just is bad. there was no. I mean, nothing. You no warning. Nothing. It was like, oh, we're having a meeting, discussing. I don't know some Another bullshit. Meeting. Yeah. And they're like, we're letting the you go. Bullshit was you <laughs> exactly. You're a sack of shit, and you yeah. need to leave immediately. So like, security's standing over us. I'm packing my shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. But they gave us which is remarkable really for this kind of hourly gig. They gave us two, I think two months of severance. So they're like, we're going to pay you for two months while you figure shit out. So yeah, at that point, I basically had started making these videos. I had transitioned from making like beats to having discovered Reggie Watts, right? Our dear friend and incredible innovator. Yeah. Yeah. Mentor (laughs) grandfather. Uh Um, and he, yeah, basically he like b- just opened my eyes to looping and improvising and he just blew my fucking but mind. But it's so odd because it seems like you were so, you're like brimming with it. I mean, I guess so, dude. It's like not even something that, it weirdly, it does combine like both of these things. It combines the training in music with the theater. It's like a yeah. very much- a blend of those, but it's not something I ever thought about. You know, it was like, I just wanted to make music, take myself seriously and shit. And then I saw Reggie doing his thing and I was like, oh my God. And then you realize that like looping really mirrors the process of making music like traditionally on logic or any DAW software like that. It's just much faster more sort of rudimentary but the uh, the elements are the same basically yeah and you can just do it a lot faster so yeah i i saw him doing that and i was like i must do something like this you know like i I have to try and so yeah i got a looper and basically fucked around with it for a year while i was working this job got let go and then that's when i said okay i have two months so i'm now gonna see And this was kind of at the end of, at this point, I'm like 28 and I had given up probably half a dozen times. You know what I mean? Just like, it's time to call it. One of those times is when I got my real estate license. I was like, it's, I just, I'm getting too old to like continue dreaming about this. And I clearly don't have what it takes. Like I don't have the work ethic. I don't have, so I was like, all right, I have two months. Let's see if I can pay my rent by the end of the two months. If I can do that, I'll keep trying. If not, that's it. Big boy job. Grow the fuck up. Uh, Yeah. And so I went around Dallas and like bothered bartenders for their boss's email and shit and sent them my little videos and got a Friday gig at this place. And then um, basically doing the same shit I'm doing now. And you would set set up. up. Yeah. Cause some of the tape, some of the videos of you, I call them tapes. Cause I'm, yeah. a, I'm <laughs> 77 years young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some of these videos, you look, they look like fucking Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. <laughs> I want to be in that girl's club. 
I want to be in that girl's hood. Like, they're not venues. They're not perf- – maybe they are, but they don't <laughs> oh, look like venues They're to me. not. They're not venues. It's a restaurant or it's uh, – yeah, it's you're like a brunch at, you're crowd. You're bothering people. Yes. Oh, 100%. You dude. might as well be handing out flyers. Yeah. <laughs> Like yeah. you're, it's not like it's like people are not like they're not there for you. They are a hundred percent not there for me. Often do not want me to be there. They would have preferred you try to sell them real estate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, than, exactly. Then you do what you were doing. They're eating a fucking sandwich. Yeah, they're trying to order like another beer, and yeah. I'm like, pussy, pussy, let me in. I'm trying to fuck. You know, yeah. and it's just not. What did you think your first show was going to be? What was your loose plan? I, I I really didn't have much of one. I mean, I like, I just, I have never really had much of one. It's sort of set the table up, set the keyboard up, make sure it sounds decent. Jesus is here. And then let's just. Let just roll. Don't forget about love over there. We're just going to fucking roll, you know, and it's like I would just use what I was thinking about that week. If I'd seen a movie or I wanted to like rail on a director or whatever, just what's happening at this table over here. And it's just always been like very abrasive and uh, often unpleasant. But I think <laughs> there's like there was something about it. It really hasn't changed much. I mean, it's pretty I know much it, the I, same I, I, it, show. It's, it's there's a there's a thing in you that is pent up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. You and it's like you can tell, and it's it's like an expression of what everyone has pent up. Yeah, and yeah. You I think like that's a good way of putting it. And it, it, oddly, like you say, Reggie Watts, it reminds me more of Jack Black. Mm. Then, then, not oh like God. you say Reggie Watts, like you don't know what you're talking about. But I'm yeah. saying, like, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. When, like, when Jack plays like the sax man on Fallon, yeah. or even when he would scat <laughs> in Tenacious D, yeah, there was like this fearsome, and it was kind of angry, but there was like a grandeur and a fearsomeness to it that I think you also are doing, where it's like. You just seem like I got to get it out. Yeah. So it's something like that. I, it's it, nice to hear. I, I love Jack. Black. I and mean, it yeah, like spins the point. audience. Yeah. It's the sort audience of this, gets this... spun up into the into the fun of it. Right. And it's they don't even really know what's happening. Yeah. Just and I don't really either. You know, that's sort of what it is. Yeah. It's like the, actually someone told me that the other night last night. Actually, they were like, we went to your show and we weren't sure if you were the main guy like we thought you were the opener or something we just weren't sure that you were supposed to be on I couldn't stage. believe this many people would come <laughs> to, for to this. See this i'm running around screaming at everyone you know it's just like but that's exactly the reaction i think it's like once i did it once at some random it only bar, has to work once exactly and then, you, then you probably just have to get in that spirit right right and sort of then you're fine tuning then you're like okay, let me twist this dial a little this way. Like, does this work? This doesn't work. And then you sort of, yeah, it's just like by trial and error, you do it again and again and again. I'm sure you know this. Do you Stand bomb? Up. Do you, are there shows that are significantly worse than others? For sure. Definitely. Are they getting less often? Yes. I would say now. <laughs> Good. Yeah. <laughs> right. That would kind of suck. But I'm saying like, Still you know, all right, so you don't, you must have gotten a loop that wasn't, you must have looped something that was a little fucked up. Oh yeah. And people are like, ah, I'm not feeling like they. 100%. And did. you just like, re- is there a reset function? Yeah, that's what I usually do. Now it's like, I've learned that that, w- and that people like, they want to see that fuck up you know and like it they want to see it acknowledged so i fuck up i'm like i don't fucking like this where that's it erase yeah. it we're starting again and that's just it you know it's yeah. like it's sloppy but they, it's it's interesting because it makes them they're kind of in the band with you yeah exactly where yeah, they're yeah, kind of yeah. like nah, i'm not feeling it. <laughs> yeah that's they don't a good say way that to put but it. it's like they get to be in the in like what do you else Play me another loop. Right, right. What else? What, yeah, what like are we doing? they get to be Jay Z yeah. with Timberland, where it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, nah, yeah, whatever. What else? What else you got? Hey, yeah, you wanna tweet that? Uh, bang, 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 bang. Was there a period of like disinterest and rejection of what you were doing? Not 
really. No, I'm not I mean, talking about the ten. Your entire twenties. Oh yeah, no, I'm talking that. about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm oh, talking God. about once you started doing just a decade of trauma. Yeah. Yeah. Selling We've real, all got it. real estate. We've all got Gang. it. Hopefully. Yeah. So w- the the period, like once you started posting videos, they all, yeah. did they get traction fairly soon? Fairly. Yeah. Fairly. It was like, you know, it took, th- there were like a couple moments where it went from like nothing to really something. And then from something to like, man, now we made, this could be a business. You know, there were yeah. like kind How of two separate. I think I started making videos in like 2000. 16 ish and and then started touring in 2018 so and so that's super long how much what was the first video to get like 100,000 how what, the first video second video what yeah uh, yeah yeah it would have been i mean i tried like maybe a dozen and then i scrapped them all and started doing a different thing and from those it started you know i would post some just to, to reddit to like the video subreddit and one or two of those would would go and then so those you, you're talking maybe 20 40 thousand views something like that and then 2018 i'm starting to play these shows in dallas at the restaurants and shit i moved back to you new york some of dallas's finest restaurants yeah <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> congratulations that's Thank why i brought you, you so here. congratulations much. on one of the great restaurant bloopers <laughs> residencies it's a big deal <laughs> It's a big it's a, deal. And I'm here to tell you, yeah. it's a very big deal. Um, yeah, I mean, once I hit a wall there, then I moved. To, I, I used to live in New York for a bit, and then I moved back because I was like, you know, I, I, I got to this point where I was playing these residencies, whatever you want to call it, at these bars and restaurants and starting to fill them out. And so then I was like, let me try and see if I can do a hard ticket show at a venue. No one, no venue at Dallas wanted in Dallas wanted to do it. Wouldn't have it. So I was like, I'm going to go back to New York. Didn't matter. You could have put the money up yourself or they just didn't want to have you. They didn't want to give you a night and risk it. They just didn't want to give me a night. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So I moved to New York and then somewhere in there, Facebook, I was putting the videos up there at the same time. And within a week, those a selection, three or four of those videos went from 20, 30,000 views to like 5 million, yeah. just like bang yeah, and multiple. And I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Then I started getting requests like come play here, come play right. there. And then, so yeah, then I signed with a booking agency and they wrangled it into like a very messy tour. And so then I was working and that's and, basically been touring ever. Do you pr- try to prepare for shows? Is it about clearing your mind or not clearing or having a little plan? I it's I think yeah, I like to have a little seed. It's yeah. like it's like if I can somewhat figure out just a basic, even if it's a phrase or like um just a general thought uh to get the thrust underway right up top, the show is much better off. I have nothing else. I basically go up, I try to go up with like a thing. Is that usually the thing you open with? Yeah. Yeah. And then it's you'll the take top. the confidence of that. And then we're then And then we're start rolling. shitting on people's pants. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Making songs about how what they he doesn't deserve that girl, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> right, right. Um, and he doesn't. And <laughs> let me be clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So what do you think of that trajectory? I mean, it's a good, it's a very lucky one, you know, I would say. It's like very very fortunate. I mean, I know a lot of people who have grinded away for a lot longer and gotten not as far, yeah. you know, it's just the way it is. And like, I think you have to be willing to acknowledge, yes, any of us who have gotten anywhere have worked hard and have something yeah, to offer but- or interesting, whatever. But luck and timing and like just the fucking thing of like i grew up with parents who wanted to teach me have me learn piano yeah i didn't do that yeah you know what i mean i didn't fucking go put myself in an yeah, acting like, class there's some stat about I'm bill gates and steve wozniak and all those guys like yeah they lived in a in a in a town where it, the one computer in california <laughs> right. was i don't even i know it's bill gates a few of them but it's yeah. like I, yeah, he's smart and did it, but that's like that's just fortune. Yeah, dude, it's circumstantial. It's yeah, it's all it's a universe of things that coalesce 
to like throw you into something good if you're if 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 you want to do it and if you're there at the right time and like yeah it's just it i think i just hit a lot of you know I, obviously i spent a long time like trying to do it and not but i just wasn't trying hard enough I, you have I wasn't your hard one of your blocks is overthinking your job oh yeah what does that mean well i think the, it's when i'm overthinking i think it mostly has to do with like the death of the future of my career and how you know i've only been doing it professionally for six seven years now and so i'm not on solid enough ground i think to be confident i i, I feel better about it these days than i did two or three years ago but like still i just don't feel confident enough that like 10 years from now I will continue to capture people's attention and money and continue to be inspired by any form of this. You know, it's just like, how the fuck am I going to keep this charade up? You know, it's like, I don't. So it's a lot of thoughts like that. Is it? Well, what I, I if I could make a suggestion, just Please. save your money. Mm. That's a big, no one ever thinks of it. Mm. Save it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just save your money. Save, save your a, money. That's yeah. the, A, yeah. save your money, and B, <laughs> uh, branch out, do other shit. If you can compose, compose. Like you I am know. trying to do that. Yeah. I am trying to do that because I'm terrified. It has something to do with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There's AI we don't mean to talk about. Jesus Christ. But what you're doing is not AI-able. It's, mm. you could AI the song. Yeah. You could AI the loop. Yeah. You can't AI you in a robe. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's also, it's actually funnier the older you get. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because I'm picturing you with fuck. like a man, like a fucking, that bun <laughs> yeah. in the robe. <laughs> yeah. It works still. <laughs> that's, Especially if it's. That is a it, funny thought. If it's silly. It's like, you're still like, talking about fucking and desperation yeah. and d dumb job shit just it will still work okay that's so nice. i don't that's and i nice. say that as a real piece of shit yeah. snob <laughs> yeah and i can tell you like no i can i can it works you could see it and see yeah, it working it still works yeah that's a huge relief yeah that's a huge relief uh that's nice to hear do you what what's the next thought if you're if you're like this isn't gonna work i should have x well you know i'm kind of in the process of like it's it's like you said like like um branching out and and trying to make sure also, that no one's put you in anything no one no, well i've had some cameos as myself right you're in uh the woman santino the yeah ricky stanicki Get the fuck out of bed bitch go and then i was in um 80 for brady with like jane fonda and anything Sally that Field any and movies shit. that don't rhyme yeah <laughs> Any non-rhyming films? Wait. No. <laughs> well, it's something to look for. Twenty twenty-five. Stick to that theme. <laughs> Just keep doing rhyming. Yeah, movies. like does it rhyme? Then I'm no, not doing I'm it. Out. I'm yeah. out. It, I'm how, out. I don't, million the dollars. Title. I don't get. I don't give a fuck a million dollars. <laughs> the shit doesn't rhyme, honey. <laughs> Goodbye. Make call it me rhyme. When I, call me when it rhymes. Yeah. Yeah, like because. A, you could be in a, you could be. I would like to do that. I mean, okay. I, I'm you, interested I, in getting thing, back like, to acting a little bit. You know, I, I, I've told my agents that and we've, they've sent me some self tapes and shit, but it's more about, I'd like to be on board with a director who thinks I'd be funny in this thing yeah. and is willing to just take a chance and put me in some shit. It's funny because when you talk about going to acting school, yeah, there, there's a director, I believe his name's Josh Fox. Mm. He directed a movie called Gasland. Mm. And he's in the movie. It's a, it's like a great documentary, mm. and he's made two of them. But he's in the movie, and he's got a lot of presence. And I was like, why does this guy have like for a Dre? He just has like a lot of stage presence. Uh. And then of course he was he used to be an actor. So what I'm oh, saying is like see. Yeah, with yeah. you, it's like this guy's pretty good looking and has like charisma, right? For working at a Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> harassing yeah. people with music. I just wanna come inside your tree house. Right. Um, so what I'm saying is like I that'll that'll probably take care of itself. I hope so. Yeah. It would be a good thing to leverage. It's like, you know, it's like you use the good fortune yeah. to continue some good fortune here and there. Now it's like a little easier to grab. So I do that. And then yeah, I'm producing like traditionally now, finally going back to producing some actual shit, some like 
thought about in advance, recorded with a band to tape songs. So I've got a few of those. One of them that I'm like really happy with, I think has potential as single material. And, right. Um, yeah. So. And is there a part of you that thinks like, am I trying to capture lightning in a bottle? Meaning part of the joy of it Yes, is watching the creation and people like right. <laughs> yeah, huh? it's yeah. I mean, it's obviously not that you know. I my the hope is that it just works on its own yeah. as like a dope song. Yeah. You know that with that is without. I mean, it's completely disconnected from. It has a little bit of my. It's kind of silly energy in it in a way, but it's, it's a straight ahead like song. And it also like Tenacious D made an album of their songs that he, I used to see them do live and they were like, oh, yeah. and I was always worried like it won't translate, but they're uh, bangers are banger. It fucking works. Yeah, dude. If it sounds good, you know, no one really cares. Um, I'm glad I could disabuse you of, of the overthinking. Your That's it's block. a huge help, to, especially to hear from people who have been in it. You know, it's like just that it's going to be all yeah, right. It's you'll yeah, you'll figure it out as a director. I, I can use this like yeah. I can uh, stand there. Right, right. <laughs> say that like you have a lot of virtues. Did you have a point where you were like, this is fucking over? Were you always kind of sailing? And no, I it's was over. It's overall. I mean, Patrice O'Neill one time said, "You're not really a comedian until you think your career's over three different times." Oh Jesus, yeah. Like it's over. Fuck. After Half Bay came out, CNN said Dave Chappelle's career is over. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It was reported by the news. <laughs> the news. This is when it was they over. pronounced it dead. Oh my god! On the news. Wow. Like, so, uh, that's just one. Uh, but yeah, like I, uh, this. The special that just came out, yeah, is way more popular than the other ones. Wow! And I thought I was plateauing, and I was like, "Am I gonna keep?" Like I, I said to somebody, I was like, "I'm not gonna keep being overlooked." Oh man! And then you just go, "Oh, great! It's working." Yeah, Fuck, I, it dude. fucking worked. I it worked. Like That's it amazing. went from a whatever. Like, and it, but it's it's happens i've been in doing it 30 years so yeah, it's like there's so there's, just, there's plateaus and then you think this is it and then it then for some point it will be right but just not yet I but see. it's but it's never it's never like a gimme it's never easy mm. it's never like oh yeah if I can, i'll show up I'll fucking bet. right it's all and that's mm. you got to stay alert as a performer you know you part of what's good about it is you do seem like it's there's something hectic about it for sure yeah but yeah yeah it's like i think the, the the worry is that it will that you know you 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 continue to interest people like less and less and less and then it's like eventually you just fizzle out but i think it's what you're saying is important that it's like you have to actively effort towards continuing to make yourself interesting to people yeah you know? yeah like i i did a bunch of, i mean all the mental health shit i've done but like yeah I, but like i you know i i met i worked i changed my essence yeah do you dude you fucking did i saw blocks <laughs> I, at i know he saw alive. Lion. he saw alive anyone who sees alive is a friend for life so <laughs> like dope as and fuck. then this uh, one is like i'm a different essence wow. my essence is different wow so yeah long-term relationships Oh yeah, yeah. Go. We would have thought you were having a very easy time with committing to one person. <laughs> what with your schedule and being a musician, <laughs> yeah. We, everyone thought that it was going to be. A, a Aren't easy, you surprised? Yeah, <laughs> a walk in the park with you. What's going on, Mark? What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's weird now because right now, for well, for the first time in literally a decade, I am in like a good healthy committed thing with a really excellent human being and it caught me by surprise and i was not looking for it act kind of actively rejecting that because and i thought it's erica bad too it's <laughs> yeah we can announce it here <laughs> erica come on out come on out. yeah <laughs> And she has one of her giant head things on. We have to like have to move. Help her yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but basically it just, I don't know. I i think that it, it, it's made me realize that for a long time, I think it's possible that I 
could have been capable of like loving someone, but I believe that I was really afraid of what it does to me. You know, it's like I jump in very hard and at, at first I think that's okay, but I think you have to learn to like live with someone reasonably, you know what I mean? And like be your own person and shit. But I, I I've realized that I have a tendency to get overly obsessive, involved, put all of my energy into the person. And I think I, I, it, somewhere in the back of my mind, I was aware of that and didn't want to flip that switch, you know? So yeah. it was like, had you done it in smaller doses? So to speak? yeah. Yeah. And, but, uh, and with the wrong people, it with out. the wrong people yeah. a decade prior, yeah. you know? And it was, it was that, and it was also just not right. But from then that moment on, and then this, the music thing started happening. So then I'm touring and first of all, it's just harder to do right. that. Um, and then, yeah, I just very consciously, verbally, regularly kept it casual one time, no more than three times, you know, this kind of thing where it's, I do not develop an attachment. And you would say upfront. Yes. No. Somewhat upfront within the first <laughs> evening. You know okay. I mean? No, no, no. I'm not saying like you like, but don't, don't say a word. <laughs> Yeah, no, 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 no. Before yeah. you tell me about your day. All right. Well, as somebody who's been had a similar approach, at, now I have a great girlfriend and it's going. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. That's but great. My question is, do you say that yeah. you say to the to the woman that is interested and you're interested in, uh, in her? Yeah. How many of them understood and believe what you were saying? Percentage wise that I was a casual dude and that I wasn't didn't want anything beyond. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think we all say it and then but some of our behavior leads them to believe that we like that's this true. is the behavior of a guy who wants to be more yeah, connected because, to like, me. Th that's yeah, it's I mean, I, I understand that occasionally it was confusing. Probably, you know, it's like if I saw someone multiple times, I do exhibit those qualities of like I'm being kind and considerate mm -hmm. and doing things. And, you know, it's like. These are just things, but I think I think of it as I'm being kind and we've already established that I don't, you know, so, but. Um, the great philosopher Ali Wong once said, <laughs> clarity is kindness, mm. which I agree with. The problem clarity. is it's hard to, it, it, people, you know, if it's good, if it's a good connection. Exactly. And, and you've slept with them. Right. It's just a very hard thing to like. I feel like it's next to impossible yeah you know to like have that tenderness with someone and yeah. see them multiple times yeah. and for feelings not to develop in some way yeah. for one of you you know it's like me i was very good at like i already know i this is not gonna last so like i'm already detached i'm not there yeah <clears throat> i'm enjoying the fantasy of being tender with somebody right with the knowledge that i will never see them again you know that sort of thing yeah and um and I would say it, it, that it, in a much nicer way, you know, in a much more sort of considerate way, but to that effect, yeah, I would, I would say that, but it turns out you would say it's not going to happen, baby. Yeah. <laughs> baby, li listen to me. <laughs> this thing ain't going to work out. All right. Yeah. Take a walk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's the nice, that was your nice. That's the nice one. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah, it's just, it's like, of course, of course course we're capable of big beautiful life-affirming love you just have to be and also it took g encountering someone who yeah. really made me want to like, do in that in some ways it's like you're not into it until you are that's i guess it's was that too you know because it well i didn't even think about it with her with my girlfriend i, I yeah i just i met her and we had this date that just blew my mind i was like i just want to see her again yeah and then i want to see her again and i want to see her again and and then you're just yeah it's, it's i don't know the it just thing happens. that me and my girlfriend talk about is it has to be self-interest mm. it has mm. to be 
Mm-hmm. I I want to see you again. Yeah, I'm not doing it as a favor to you. Right. I'm not doing it because I because sh- we slept together and I owe you. <laughs> yeah. I'm doing it because it's better to be with you than by myself. Man. Or it's awfully close. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and but it we just get caught up in all these other reasons. I think that's a really lovely way of thinking about it. Yeah. You're right. It's it's selfish. Yeah. Like I want it. No, I, I'm doing I'm here for me. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about you. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, Best this of makes luck. Me you figure feel you good. out. Yeah. Yeah. And I wanna be here for me. I don't yeah. I'm not I'm not doing I'm not going on vacation. I'm not taking you on vacation. Right. <laughs> We're yeah. going I'm excited to go on vacation with you. Yeah. But it it's in, because of the sex and because of the social shit, it's very hard to decouple obligation and shoots yeah. and what are they going to say and da, 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 da. it's like no i just i'd fuck with you and i want to that's it's so simple once it works like yeah. once once it clicks it's like it is automatic it's like reflex i'm not i don't i haven't thought about it really once it's just like just and what's the love what are the how long's it been eight months and what are like sort of the features of it um well she lives here i live in new york um but she is from brooklyn Great. and so she's back and forth i'm back and forth kind of works in that way yeah um i'm here i would say more often because of her but it's also been good for business and the the features really i mean personally are she is every bit as um big a personality and her own person and like this ebullient you know um sociable graceful like you know she is perfect in a room she's engaging i fuck me you know it's like it's just she is her with or without me yeah and that is hyper attractive to me she doesn't need your permission no and doesn't want it and like um wants and to by the be, way and doesn't have it and does yeah see i've forbidden her yeah, to leave times. the apartment and you've taken her out of parties that's right and said i will not stand for another minute of this she says come on i said it's me or nothing <laughs> you should i'll point to you when it's your time to talk <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah it's just someone who you know is like very much an equal and like it is just yeah just independent i yeah that's what I need because like I am that too. Yeah. And yeah, anyway, just I thought that, the, you know, the tendency for myself to sort of fall into these weird kind of, um, it kind of ties into one of my other blocks that I sent you, which is people pleasing, which is something that I've looked at recently in this relationship, which is like this need that I have to make sure that everything's okay And in doing so, I'm not really being like honest or like doing things that I really want to do in the interest of like just making sure that everything's fine and taking care of everything to because I haven't had a relationship in 10 years. You know, it's like I'm terrified that if anything goes wrong, it'll fall apart and I'll lose this magical thing. So I so I was really busying myself for the first six months or so with like really making sure that everything was just perfect like a dance recital yeah and she didn't like that eventually we had this talk and where you know she's like i don't i want the you the person you are without me with me like just do your thing it's more attractive to me when you fuck off and do your thing because like that's what i like don't bother you know she's like it's and it i thought about it and i was like man it's something about myself that I thought I had fixed long ago in my friendships. I was a real people pleaser to a problematic degree where it was like, what was your low? I don't know if I can think of a specific one, but it was basically like really to the detriment of my happiness. I was doing things for friends, I would like steal money from my parents to go do things with friends because I wanted to say yes to them, you know, yeah, that kind of shit where it's like, I'm doing something I inherently know is wrong because I have to, I, have I don't, to be I can't, the guy that can do it. 
I can't disappoint these people. Exactly. Exactly. So that I went through my shit with that and like worked on it and fixed it for the most part. And then I'm here in this relationship. I'm like, I'm doing this again. I am fucking doing this again. It's like this behavior hasn't surfaced in years. And now here I am, like I'm back in my fuck, I'm 21, like doing this bullshit. And it just took her kind of pointing it out and me thinking about it and therapizing about it and all this shit to realize like, wow, I really can just take a deep breath and like live my life and also be in love with somebody. And like, that's the healthy version, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, it was a real revelation. It was like a real It is hard to point. believe though. Yeah, it it's is. It's hard to believe. I remember having a girlfriend at one point, I go, so you're not mad at me <laughs> for anything? <laughs> and she was like, no, why would an adult woman be mad at a boyfriend all the time? I was like, I don't know, but it keeps happening. Wow. And so now it's it you do have to make a concerted effort to do the self interested thing. Yeah, right, right. And it is it runs counter to romance, it runs counter to uh 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 you know, masculine virtue and it yeah. runs counter to to everything. Chivalry, all that shit. And but you have to go like, no, I I if I don't the relationship will end if you don't do it. It's a hundred percent that, and you don't. It's hard to realize it, but it's like no, you ha even like with my girlfriend. I'm like, no, I have to approach this and say like, I can't get together tonight. Yeah, right. Or I don't want to get together tonight. Yes. And it's like you don't want. Yeah. And it's like or wh whatever you want, however you want me to couch this. Like, yes, we're individuals. I'm a I'm a I'm a pretty lonery guy. Yeah and acknowledging that part of yourself mm. it's hard it's it's scary Man, that is it's fascinating i'm I, i'm glad to hear you say all of that because yeah i mean it's just yeah it's something that i've been thinking out and i think yes having to make a concerted effort because i picture you just being in a shitty apartment in dallas yeah. for <laughs> years that's very true by yourself yeah dude like that robe wasn't a choice no <laughs> That That's wasn't like, uh huh. <laughs> what should I wear on stage? It's like, no, what well, you were, it's just, that's the other thing that's appealing about it. It's like, yeah. you're just watching a guy in his room. It looks like you're in your room. Right, right. That's the appeal of Often it. I am. Yeah, you know, that's the guy I'm right. Not on but, stage. Right. Yeah. But it's like, if you were going to do a larger show, you could just make the stage, the production design, a room. Yeah, true, true. Like, we did that actually last year at Coachella. We did they reproduced my apartment yeah. on stage. That's exactly <laughs> what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's like what it, what, so, so yeah, like what was the, uh, what was the sort of impetus for the discussion with the girlfriend about the, about? Um, I think it was just like a, one of those things where she was like, I'm, I'm feeling weird about like, I just like feel weird about where we're at, you know, it just feels like everything is okay all the time, but it's not real. You know is, I mean? right, do you wear it is it on you if you're dissat if you feel like you're self-sacrificing or abandoning yourself yeah yeah could a loved one tell oh uh, yes i probably you know yeah probably i think i probably hide it fairly well but she happens to be extraordinarily perceptive and i think it's just any time there's this tiniest thing and i'm not acknowledging or whatever she's like the fuck is going on you know? Yeah. So yeah, she just said something to that effect. And, and then uh, we just kind of spent the whole day apart and when I, I went and thought and was just kind of running through shit and then realized I was like, man, I am, I am doing this exact thing that was so destructive to like my friendships, my sense of self-worth. Cause did my, you feel like they owed you if you had done a bunch of stuff? Did you subtly feel like well, why don't they ever do shit for me? Because that that would happen to me too, where I would resent them for not matching my will, oh, my contribution. Right. Like, we never agreed to that contribution. Yeah, exactly. It's all in your head. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's like what it was for me. For for me, it's like I'm, you know, I would be cementing the guarantee of um, me being perceived as a good 
solid dude it's yes everything is perfect about this you know what i mean when it's like i can i'll 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 i'm getting ready to boyfriend the shit out of yeah you. <laughs> right watch yeah watch me boyfriend. where are you gonna be right <laughs> Yeah. I'm getting ready right to boyfriend. Oh, uh, dude. It's and you're, so mi- it's like, I don't, but I don't like it. No, I don't like it. Suffocating. Uh, yes. Oh, no, don't suffocating myself. Do that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Oh, you want me to suffocate? <laughs> oh, yeah. I got you. I got By the, you. And she doesn't. Right, right. It's just this, this thing of you think she does. Yeah, it's, dude, totally, totally. And once I, once I just unraveled that little piece of it, then I could think of it in the context of all the other shit in my past and the way. And then I was like, oh man, that's, that's it. Like I just need to fucking chill really is it. (laughs) It's like chill and continue to do all the things I've been doing for the last 10 years for myself. There's just this other other person who I dig in my life. Meet her afterwards. Meet her after. We'll fucking hang out. You'll you won't have the oblig you won't have the resentment of the unmet obligation and all that shit. It's like yeah, for the last whatever month or so, I don't know how long it's been since we had that talk, but yeah, it's been it's just been continually better in that way, and it's just yeah, it feels, and I feel more this like like this burden has been lifted somewhat, and I'm allow I uh, allowing myself just to be whatever the fuck grumpy leave uh, you know all this shit that i would do be whatever like, you want should don't, I? don't cheat yeah fuck that but pretty much do whatever you want mm. you know what i mean like mm. or or uh meet your own needs meet have your needs whatever meet your needs but don't cheat don't mm. that's the that's where i do that's the one thing yeah. yeah uh unless you have to yeah <laughs> <laughs> this is interesting didn't see it coming mm. work ethic oh yeah i would have thought you were more driven because it says mm. you're lazy here i am i th- i think i am i i have been told i'm not but i disagree i i disagree you're with you all the time you exactly. probably have a better idea yeah i think so you know i've gotten good at this one thing i can do it pretty reliably you know i can set my shit up and play a, a g- good show now baseline it's it's good sometimes it's really good sometimes it's like a little less good but it's always it's always yeah. fine and it's i think also has to do with comparing what i'm doing versus what so many other musicians entertainers performers in my position are are doing the level of work that they're putting in the podcasts they're going on I, this is the first podcast i haven't done a podcast in fucking i don't know how long it's just i don't have the press schedule i'm yeah. not doing the twice daily posts with the yeah, 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 ad yeah. mat and the, yeah. this and the I, I have someone managing my message i don't have any of that shit and i i would say i definitely prioritize my leisure my life my enjoying the breeze significantly more than i do my work you know and i am only working really when i absolutely have to and then when the pressure is really on i'll get some shit done but then and only then and it's just i just don't think i have a really intense um work ethic like a lot of people in in this business do you know what what are your thoughts on that I was just telling somebody, I think a lot of the sort of the secret sauce of people, performers, and yeah, anyone who moves out here to do be in showbiz, yeah, or even be on inter- on internet showbiz, yeah, um, status. You want mm. some status? Mm. I want more status. And so status. I think you got you were you had you were low status for a decade, yeah, and then you got a bunch of status. Right. People recognize you. People, you get respect. You get beloved. Let me take a photo. Da, da, da. Right. It's pretty good. Yeah. And so I, I, I don't. I'm not mad at people stopping to smell the breeze. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I have an idea of the kind of money you make on the road. Yeah. I think there are. I don't think. Uh, like sort of tactical ambition would serve you 
I per, and you probably feel the same way or or go back and forth like Yeah, I just think it would make me unhappy. Yeah. You know? And part of your thing is being joyful. Yeah, yeah. Have to be in that place for yeah. it to for it to work, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also this thing of I I this is another component I think which is something I think about a lot which is I think that a lot of people in this business do have this possibly unhealthy ambition to constantly be like constantly one up constantly be better than the other dude constantly make it to the number one thing yeah. boom 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 and you're stepping on heads and you're ignoring other things and it's all to do this and i just i it doesn't i don't have it in me you know it's like that's why I say it's so fortunate to get even anywhere close to where I am, where I'm playing the kind of venues I'm playing. It's insane yeah. because not, it was not by design. It was not a really a product of this like crazy ambition. It just hit right and allowed me to get there kind of. And it sort of unfolded that way. But it wasn't like, okay, by, you know, 20 21 i'm going to be playing 5000 cap venues and then by 2022 we're going to be none of that shit you didn't even know what cap was i didn't know i'd never i i, I didn't know anything about venue capacity <laughs> yeah that's right the and i kind of also wouldn't mind keeping it kind of right here because any higher or much higher i would say and then your life really starts your public life probably really yeah. starts shifting. Yeah. And you're not able to do the same things and you're not able to take a walk and go read a fucking book somewhere or whatever. That stuff is hyper important to me. And I know that if I get like more famous and shit, that that's, you kind of have to say bye-bye to like simple pedestrian pleasures yeah. like that. I don't, that's not even, I the thing that, as you were saying, that the status that I think people want love and they'll, they, and they, substitute status mm. that you get from showbiz success and adulation right and you go like huh. convert That's it love. into love and That's you're love. it's not mm. and you just ah. <laughs> maybe this time yeah, yeah. <laughs> so make it work. And it's not it just isn't yeah uh but i but the if i were you and like you know somebody somebody called for for uh for like we need you to do this thing and you're just gonna be like i gotta be joyful baby mm. like hmm. it really is important yeah you, i don't i don't you're not eh. it's like it's I, gotta be it's got the part of the your appeal is spiritual yeah right so huh. you have mm. to protect it yeah but you can tell it was in involved uh, uh not involuntary but like you were forced Unplanned to make these or, yeah, yeah, just like, I don't fucking know. I was in a robe. I, yeah. I was basically like at home alone and I'll go fucking play around. This. Yeah, I'll play these shows. Oh, the shows are doing well. Okay, we yeah. do bigger venues. Sure, let's do bigger yeah. venues. You know, it's sort of that. Yeah. But yeah. I can't imagine you getting off stage and be like, there are only 4,000 people here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What the fuck are we doing? Fill it out next yeah, time. Yeah. Fill it what, out. Yeah. What? There was an area. No, there was an area in the back. Yeah. No, that's for safety. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, no more safety. Let's also, though, I don't want to pretend like I don't care. You know, it's of like. Of course not. We all. What What are we in this for? Yeah. We're insecure little yes. sluts that need our validation. New status. We yeah. all need it. It's we wouldn't be in front of cameras like begging for it if we didn't. Yeah. And that's just the reality. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, obviously I but, like, I uh, like but seeing I a would packed house. Yeah. yeah it's nice yeah, to see. Kill you. But, yeah. I flew all the way here. <laughs> right. A little more promo. Uh, yeah. But I don't, I think that there is something to be said for not honoring your process, but just like, yeah, it's pretty, it's not, it's working. So there's no point in forcing it. Uh, you know, like let's take us up to the next level. Next level, yeah. That's just, it's, you just let it happen. Let it be what the yeah. fuck it is. I don't know. I guess it's just this kind of thing of like, yeah, I I want a future. I I, I do want it to be sustainable, but I also don't want to like kill myself doing that. Yeah. So it's like a little bit of both. It's like I don't. I will never reach 
the heights that I think I potentially could if I had a different sort of state of mind about this. And I feel like if I if I was different, if I thought differently about it, I could probably really pump it up. But it's just not me. Yeah. Not I, me. I would I would suggest sticking with like protect it if yeah. you can. Not to the point that you're fucking yourself, but like, Right, right, right. Now the last block, mm. resisting advice. Oh man. So you're not you're not gonna do what I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah, I'm gonna walk out of you've here. You've told you've 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 asked me for advice and I've given I have. It, I have and you and I've and you've you've done it, I think. That's true. Yes, I have. Um what is is that just like some punk rock shit? If I'm looking for it, I want it. Got it. But if I'm given it sort of unsolicited offhandedly, yeah. yeah, yeah, unsolicited, it triggers this awful reaction that I don't like. I immediately reject it. It's like I I I hate it now and I, I can't reject do it. it. Exactly. Right. It's like I actively do not want to do what you just told. You should watch this thing. I don't, I'm not going to fucking watch it. So you funny. Know? <laughs> it's just, as, and. Oh, here you go. Yeah. You'll think this is funny. I I will go to my grave. <laughs> because you said that, I will never think it's funny. Watch. I'm never going to watch it. I'm not watching it. I'm not, I don't have to do shit. Dude, it's a disease. <laughs> it's a disease. It's something that I really need to work on, but I know where it comes from. It And it comes from, my dad, who, when he was with us, um, and uh, alive or alive. at home, yeah, yeah. alive. Um, he vi- very loving. I mean, I would say in most respects, an incredible father, but relentlessly wanted me to achieve and be a success, and gave me endless endless advice suggestions sit downs point pointing me to this and that you should did be he doing have it experience this in show like no but he definitely went from nothing to you know success so at what fashion Got and it. and and it was you know clawing his way into it it was like you know the man i mean work ethic nuts you know terrible childhood but made something of himself that whole thing and so you know to him very highly values success yeah in that that metric of success and and wanted it for me in a whole in a loving way not like my son will be the best but just i want you to be and he was winging it and but it the way it came out was in these endless fucking and I'm an, a teenager. I don't want to fucking sit down and listen to what I should be doing. I don't want to do that, you know. And so it's these this and it, it just was fucking endless, you know. And so now years, years of this fucking torture have rooted their way into your brain stem. And now any time you are suggested something or, or, or say, you know, hey, you should really try. I don't want to hear it. You know, it's like, that's the reaction. I don't fucking want to hear it. And I don't know how to, something I should work on in therapy actually is, is well, how, and how you to, feel like you're saying no to good ideas. Possibly sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I think. I've gotten maybe a little better at just trying to recognize if there's something in there that I actually might like and like I'll, maybe I'll do, like take it in secret, you know? Yeah. But <laughs> it's really overwhelmingly the energy is like, no, no, no. It's funny because I have a few different angles. Oh, on really? It. I mean, well, I totally get that. Mm. And you also want, because you, it's kind of like, I want the scalp. Yes. Yes. I want. I want. I want to, to have been the one. I that want to came have been the one with, who. Yeah. Right. And not even uh, if you're in a partnership. Like when I write with people. Yeah. I genuinely don't think I'm like elbowy. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. But I. That's got to be an interesting thing. Maybe like coming up with like a singular idea between two people. Yeah. You just have. To, I mean, me and Dave had an, an agreement to never say who wrote what. 
That's it. It's a Cause, shared. Cause that's you ha- it. Because people ask for the wrong reason. Oh. They're not asking because, oh, so that I may respect both of you. Yeah, right. <laughs> They're asking yeah. so they can just discount one of you. So yeah. it's like, I, yeah. literally, when we're writing Half Baked, I was like, no, we don't say who wrote what. Uh. And people ask me, and I'm like, that. It's just, we wrote it. Yep. We, we came up with, and occasionally we can say the other one wrote it, but mm. like, generally generally the rule is yeah, like that's don't healthy. say which i think is about the only way it can work but but i've also and i and i give unsolicited pitches mm. the reason i know dave in the first place is because i just like work in the door to comedy club and pitch jokes and to yeah. him and a bunch of people and he was like oh he was literally like fuck oh so i'm <laughs> so and i so and i want people to pitch me jokes but they almost never work. But people, I still like. But want you enjoy them receiving them. I, if you can help me, help me. See that it's I, I, I really need to be better. Because the that. thing about it, Mark, is you're getting the credit. Yeah, right. And right. and here's the other sick thing that the brain does. Mm. In 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 about a week, you're gonna think it was your idea. Because mm. mm. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen it. It's happened to me where I've been like, duh, 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 and then and I've done it to other people. Yeah. Oh wow. Where I've thought, and then they go, I re- and I was like, and then I have to remember like a detective flashback, yeah. like, oh it's yeah, that so was much, your idea. It's such a weird, we're so weirdly possessive about shit. It's yeah. weird. And I don't, you know, I think it's also, it's even more abstract. I think probably you're right in some way. It's about this like, well, I, I, I want to have been the creator the stuff that I'm doing. Yeah, I'm an auteur. I did it from the bedroom to this and I, it's been my yes. thing. And so I just like to do it my way. Yeah. But it's deeper than that. It's, it's more abstract. It's just like a pit of the stomach rejection. It has no basis in logic. I think it's like, do a you, does it feel like pressure to you to be taking someone's no for someone to say, you should X mm. when your dad would pitch like, why don't you whatever yeah. the pitches were? Yeah. Did it feel like pressure, put pressure from your dad? For sure. Yeah. Like now I'm expected to X. Right. You know? And so with him, you know, I, it eventually I was just, I would just cut him off immediately. I was like, no, Papa, I don't know. I don't want to do that right now because I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like a little bitch and but and, but you know now with 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 people who do it people close to me or whatever and it's even as silly as people even just like coming up with silly ideas i just notice that i'm like my very first the initial reaction is i don't i don't, I don't want to hear this <laughs> which is crazy because like people come up with amazing i things. like when people pitch jokes uh a tag for one of my jokes oh but don't pitch me a joke mm, mm. the the in fact here's a good example of somebody so that joke about uh the nra military showdown yeah in blocks the problem is there's still people now hoarding weapons thinking that at some point they may need to take on the american military and they think they have a shot right <laughs> and look maybe they're right which is why I'm proposing we test their theory and once a year have a head-to-head showdown. I call Chappelle. I go, has someone done that joke? And he goes, you pitched me that joke in 1993. Really? So it's just no one wants to take a whole joke. Wow. But I'll take a help me with my thing, but I don't want to do your whole thing. That's that I, you know, I kind of in the same way because it's like, if there's a good foundation that I've already sort of figured out, I am willing to get pieces. I'm willing to like improve it. If people say something where I'm like, that's good, that's good because I'm safe in the thing that like the foundation of it is already my thing and whatever, but that's, it's so, it's so fucking dumb. It's so dumb. It's just uh, so it's, self, it's self-defeating. Like, yeah, it is. It's like you could be enriching yourself with so much other shit. Yeah. And instead, the the thought is just to like act, act, just push it away. You know, the funny, the flip side is the anger I feel when someone pitches a joke, I do it and it doesn't work. Oh, shit. Like, I'm going to fucking kill them. <laughs> 
<laughs> they tricked me. <laughs> yeah. well, I was like, bye. It's a better, <laughs> it's a good system. It's a good channel to have open that you can solicit yeah. jokes from people yeah. and have them work or not. Um, <laughs> what have, have you done anything to get better with any of this? Have you therapy, medication? You, I, you know what? I have not tackled this yet in therapy. Well, no, I, I'm talking about any of these issues. Oh, 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 yeah. I'm, yeah, many of them. It's like the work ethic thing I've sort of made peace with. Um, it's just something I notice about myself, but it's like I kind of have made peace with the fact that like I, I probably will never reach the heights that I potentially could because I don't really am not interested in that right. kind of pursuit. You know that like dogged. Yeah, you. It's also pursuit. like there's a. I think there's an appropriate. You kind of know when you're like, all right, this is good. This yeah. Is good. Yeah. Exactly. This is good. I feel kind of that. And way. you're not squandering it necessarily. It's just like I don't know. I just. I don't think people know what cap size you're playing. Yeah, right. That's true. Audiences don't know. I go, no. I don't, I'll go, I maybe go, oh, that's a big room, whatever. Right. I, if that. They just yeah, go, people how's don't. parking? Exactly. Give a shit how Would much you, you're have making. Have you announced and, the dates? That yeah. People don't even know yeah, like, that can you I, have Do I have dates? to get them on StubHub? Like, you tour? You know, it's like <laughs> well, shit. Exactly. Or the other thing. Yeah, yeah. Um. All right, well, dude, it was really good talking to you. Likewise, I, like, dude. Very, I felt very connected. Yeah, and me it was, too. It was great. Lovely. And thank you for the advice. <laughs> I have a song idea. Oh, you do? Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'll just, whatever. Right. I won't leave that. 